I.O. This position that you see here on the board is a very famous composition that was made by Richard Reti in 1921. And I must tell you that when I saw this, uh, this endgame study, I must have been about, I think, 11 or 12 years old. And I must say that this was one of the reasons why I was so um, fascinated by chess because of this endgame study. I, I found the solution of this so amazing. I was, I couldn't believe that it was possible to, uh, with white pieces in this position, to achieve a draw. And when I saw the solution, I replayed it a few times and. I was really amazed and that was actually maybe that was the start why I uh, later when I when I continued playing chess I was so fascinated about about uh, end games somehow those things that uh, impress us in our uh, young age uh, stay with us but anyway let's have a look at this position because it's wide to move and the task is to make a draw and it looks almost impossible if we l look at this pawn on h5, this black pawn that actually has to advance only four steps more to promote and the white king will never, if he tries to catch him like this, he will never catch him so it looks like it's, it's hopeless for white and this white pawn, the pass pawn of white, it's so close to the black king that is very easy for the black king to simply capture it so it looks actually as if it's impossible for white to achieve a draw in this position but yes it is possible I'll show you the solution it's very it's really very beautiful king to g7 is the first move so this is actually the proof that in chess it's not like in mathematics that a straight line from A to B is the shortest way. In chess that doesn't count because now the white king is going towards the black pawn but he's not going in, in a straight line. He's going through G7 so he's making like a, a bow here. Let me show you the next step. Let's try first what if the black pawn simply advances to promote. Then what happens is this. H4 the king goes to f6, now h3, and now comes the clue of the white strategy. The white king goes to e7. So now suddenly it's like the white king changes his mind. He's not longer be going to hunt this pawn, no, he's going to support his own pawn. So now if black continues with h2 then suddenly c7 can be played and if he queens then there is a queen with check here also and we have a draw and end game now if I go back a few moves here if black here tries to catch this white pawn then the king goes to support him and then if h2 we continue simply with c7 and if the king goes here to b7 to con try to control the c8 square then of course the white king supports his own pawn and in the next move again he promotes here let's go back to the initial position here king to g7 and now what if black doesn't try to promote with his own pawn immediately but tries to catch the c6 pawn first by moving king to b6. In that case, white continues with king f6. And if now black captures here, now we see that king to g5, the white king captures the black pawn. After h4, king takes h4, it's a draw. Let's go back a few moves here because if I'll go back completely to show you the whole variation King g7 King b6 
king f6 and here of course we have also another option and that's the option of now continuing with h4 for black so black let's say tries to capture this this pawn here but at the right moment he tries to escape with this one well in that case comes actually the the most beautiful move of this endgame study and that is the move king to e5 white actually now threatens to go towards his own pawn to defend it and also is closer to this black pawn here so now if here h3 is played then king to d6 suddenly and if h2 now c7 and if black promotes white promotes as well so we see that after the move king e5 here continuing with the black pawn advancing doesn't work and if black captures now here the white pawn then white simply walks towards the black pawn and captures it because he is in what we call the square so then we achieve a draw like this well I hope you enjoyed this beautiful endgame that shows us actually how in this position the white king is able to either catch this black pawn or support his own pawn to promote here on c8 so this is the famous endgame composition by Richard Reti 1921 that's the year where it was published in a uh, I believe it was a Dutch um, I'm sorry a German um, uh, chess magazine in those days there are a few more very very beautiful uh, endgame studies by Richard Reti and if I have time I'll make a few um, videos uh, about his beautiful endgame compositions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this one and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.